overhead, but it can give you the item at the O1 time. So say, if, say it is your first name, uh, of all of your first name and that will be hashed values and hashing will be there internally, that is not shown and you can get your phone number or your phone number may be unique. So what the thing is that the phone number may be key one and your all other details may be on your values so that with the phone number it just go there and if you addition any in the phone number say in a list you have to make it a uh, sorted again to find it at the minimum possible time but the advantage of dictionary is you can get it o1 that is a big advantage uh, the dictionary is so that your program may be a little smaller definitely smaller your data the where you put your data is more intelligent and the advantage is uh, your program can be really small and uh, that's it. Any question, another thing is a dictionary a, a, can contain a dictionary. That is one more thing. A dictionary can contain a dictionary um, and the values can be duplicate value. Key can, should not be duplicate, but a, a, any dictionary can contain a uh, duplicate, uh, another dictionary inbuilt. Uh, okay. Go to the next slide. Uh, last uh, day we have already covered the just little bit discussion uh, call by value and call by reference this is very vital because uh, in c everything is mutable there and in uh, python there are two types of data mutable data and immutable data if you pass to your function a mutable uh, that is, is is called by reference and if it is immutable it is called by value so you don't have to say specifically whether it is a call by value or call by reference that's it and we can just revisit again and again the values like immutable uh, objects is like integer, float, long, complex, string. These are immutable and uh, these are mutable. Somebody, somebody may ask question. I think I have covered it. Uh, last day, have you covered the call by value, call by reference? Please, anyone can answer me. Then I can uh, call. Hello, anybody? But I have given in my YouTube video. You please see the YouTube video. Yes, but, uh, okay. Anywhere you can ask anything, you can cover it here. The this mutable thing is in C, and my immutable is uh, it has been found that uh, it is required. But I will tell some more mutable is required now also. I will come to that. Somebody may ask the question what is byte array and what is bytes? Uh, anybody read it? Bytes and bytes array, otherwise, I go on. Bytes and bytes array is nothing but in, in Python anything is unicode but if you want to put it in a byte form then you have to put it byte or byte array what is the difference again the difference between string and string buffer who those who knows about java uh, bytes is bytes is immutable bytes is bytes which are immutable and bytes array are mutable like it is it is almost like c array because array is not there in in our python it is a list, but list can contain different types of, of objects and byte array, you can take it as equivalent to uh, C array, maximum size is 256 and you have to, uh, beforehand, you have to give the smaller case B to show, put it as a byte array. We could give an example. Let's see. Yeah, another way, I uh, will come to that example. This is a Python numbers, Python numbers, integer real integer and remember all are objects no are mutable all are immutable these are all python is are immutable things integers and boolean say uh, class bool true and uh, false and here real here also immutable complex that is a great thing which the c doesn't have or java doesn't have uh, with j and sequences this is very important mutable you have uh, list and byte array. Okay, these are mutable. They are equivalent. List is Unicode and this is a byte array. Okay, and sequences are immutable. That is strings, uh, 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 tuple, and bytes. So see the difference between bytes and bytes array. It is mutable. Byte array is mutable. Immutable is bytes. Set types is you know set and frozen set. Frozen set again is immutable. Okay, you cannot change. So if set you can add, delete, no duplicate. Mappings we have a dictionary that we Sarah told. 
we have already covered a little bit and these things I will come. So, this you have to always say, remember various hierarchies of data. Uh, these are the another way you can see the data types here, dictionary is the, uh, the covered and numbers, uh, integer, long, float, complex all are immutable, string is immutable, string is mutable, tuple is immutable. So, various way, various projections you try to understand. This is a byte array object. You have to say is beforehand B that is a byte array and it will yield all the values in byte. Let us show some example. I will give an example. See here, this is a st string we have initialized with BPPIMT CAC 2023, encoding this thing in the byte array. Byte array means it is a, like a C array which is mutable and we print this and this is the output. Let us see in the actual screen thing. Is it visible? The screen is visible? Hello? Screen is visible, please. My Google collapse? Yes, sir. Yes. yes, sir. Thank you. Yes, sir. Okay. So, here, see here, here x is a, is a, what is the type of x? Is a string. I have done because it is a double quote. And what I have done, instead of just say b, see here, b. See, then, uh, this is a, if we do not give b, then it will be stored as a unicode. It will take uh, higher amount of memory because you know Unicode is, is uh, 16 bit, one Unicode and if you want to have sh push it into, because you do not need Unicode, why do you need Unicode? You want to uh, push the Japanese letter then you need Unicode, uh, if you have Devnagari, but if it is a pure English word, uh, you may, might not need, it takes a space. So, we put B instead of that is a byte array and you just see print type X and see, you run this. Let us run the it collapse. See, it is here class bytes, and if you say print text, it, it, this B means it is a type also. There is a byte array, here is a byte objects are immutable sequence of single bytes. Is it clear? So, that is it. Let us go for another example here. See, here there is another example I have told you that triple quotes. Python, the one peculiarity of triple quotes, no other language I have seen is a triple quotes and uh, in multi-line comments in C, you know, uh, star and this and at the end this another, but Python all comments are single line. If you want to put really multi-line comments, then only the triple quotes. The triple quotes are another place is required that is called doc string. You know every function that is after def, you should have a doc string that is almost mandatory so that it will go into the code to debug okay because python is uh, strictly it is not a la it is a basically scripting language uh, it is called a scripting language because you know uh, is variable types are dynamic so it's a runtime it is determined as if uh, it is it is a scripting language like perl and this thing okay so i here i say b a Python tutorial, JavaScript, JavaScript, then I print type X, print it. What happens? Let us run it. So, it is a class bytes uh, and it, this B shows the class bytes and Python, why is it? This C is a uh, new line character. So, it does not take the extra space. What I want to impress upon you, it does not store the huge amount of white spaces here. It takes a new line here. So, it actually stores new line here. Any, any, anybody, everybody has understood why this uh, backslash n because it stored the value and what we have learned that uh, Python uh, how to give uh, 
multi line comments uh, and how to and how internally uh, python saved by uh, backslashing is this screen visible please say yes or no uh, this screen is visible yes this, sir okay great yes sir yes, yes. Okay, okay okay great this all codes will be given to you don't worry you just and uh, not everything is uh, at once understandable but try to listen it you try to do your own experiment uh, until and unless you do your own on your own way also don't try to even give my another way you can learn because some of you ask with a question another great way is see you uh, say uh, you can ask bytes and you you say specifically utf8 this is another way you can uh, this uh, call it and if you should run it see is it and I, i always find it it is very helpful if you uh, print type x that that will give you sometimes you are confused what is the type with the it is better to print it whenever you are learning and whenever you are debugging also uh, print type x and then print x i this is my practice uh, print and print id doesn't mean any difference because with the getting a six digit or seven digit id doesn't it help but it sometimes whether they are referring to same thing or if you even if you refer to the same thing it doesn't help it doesn't give programmers any great help so uh, print type x is good enough um, this is by filling uh, now comes to this now comes to this one say string bppimt cac2023 encoding the string with unicode and uh, cx okay and here i make it utf 16 okay byte array so you can mention it whether it is utf 8 or utc within the parameter the string and printf array uh, here i say printf array 2 mm. uh, this is string yeah uh, st let's see what i want to do yeah yes see here if i run this yeah okay so uh, first one byte uh, here you see b the values are b b p p i m t uh, b p p i m t space c a c c s e 2023 and here uh, array 1 what i have done in array 1 print f array 1 string yes this gives all zeros why it is all zeros oh array 1 okay uh, what is the point i got i array 1 it is no i defined so it takes initialize zero so let's delete here array 1 i understood because array 1 never it is take as a zero i hope this time you are you are not confused okay so let's see what happened See here, the actual value of B is saved here. B P P I M T two zero two zero. And why this zero? This is the string. Like your uh, C language, uh, there is always a zero value uh, at the end of the string marker because this is a byte array, though it is a end of string marker. So two zero two zero two three. Then another extra zero zero. it is there is it is it sensible to you are you getting this point you have to do your own experiment i i just a string why i am taking a byte array byte array is a more uh, uh, it is better than string because it is be quicker and byte array another advantage of a byte byte array is immutable and byte is non mutable but if you are string buffered mode say you are in a buffered in something say you are in a uh, you are say you are uh, ethernet frame uh, you are buffering they are always a uh, immutable doesn't tell immutable helps i mean immutable helps because you can always last portion whichever is portion is there you can add it so mutable helps in buffering mode so but immutable helps whenever not in buffering but in a memory you want to do quick operation but whenever in real time because ultimately you know all communication are serial whatever megabits gigabits terabits 
they communicate with a serial communication. If any frame is uh, lost, then you have to retransmit the frame. So, then uh, any buffering, your better it is a mutable data. Because mutable data in the last portion, whatever is changed, go there, it can update. But if it is immutable, the whole frame has to be lost. So, buffering the mutable data is better. And But within a memory, where no real time operation is there, within a memory, no buffering, there immutable faster. So, where mutable is faster, whenever the real life communication, serial data communication, uh, then the mutable uh, faster and so that is it. If you do not understand, please raise this because it needs whenever you are doing programming because lot of things you have to create uh, um, uh, string um, and which is goes on to the internet, uh, video camera strings, then uh, mutable uh, better, okay, other than immutable. So, that is the thing. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. This is a another, we, this is a byte array. Byte is, uh, byte is uh, immutable. Byte array is mutable, I have told. So, we just see what happens. Yeah. It is byte array. It is all zeros because I have said 3, it is initialized with all zero null bytes like uh, your calloc you remember in c in calloc it is like this is it visible please one of you please answer sometimes i yes sir yeah, I see, see. if you have any question please raise don't say at the end of the thing you can question you can question any time it is it is all yours okay you can question okay now i will just go to the dictionary little bit dictionary sarah has already covered uh, most of the things I also covered in earlier. Uh, only thing I want to show this one. Dictionary contents is dictionary. A, a, a my family and dictionary you do not have to say always dict. If you say the symbol like alternative, you can, if you say the second block is opening and closing that will dictionary. So, here I say a dictionary contents a dictionary. You see here. Yeah, it is. Excuse me. Yeah, yeah, it is there. My family, then the child name, email, there is another child name, dictionary, another dictionary. So, these are the dictionary within a dictionary. How can I see it? So, my family, child one, then within it, Emil, here, Tobias. So, two hierarchy of dictionary it is there. It can be multiple. Okay. So, dictionary that is advantage and very, very much useful thing. And I think it will be very clear, it will be clear, yet it is there, same thing. Here, I want to see another thing, see here, uh, see this is the my tuple, you are, uh, you are printing it, you are getting it, this is not a big issue, but, but what is said has already just covered. I just want to cover this this uh, iterable thing. Uh, what is basically iterable uh, things? It's a great thing. I just I go to the uh, screen once more. Uh, I've covered this one. This this is I have covered more or less data types byte array. That means mutable for you just. Remember, byte array is mutable, it is useful in any real life communication so that it is a changeable. And byte is a non immutable like a string, that is. And what is the byte advantage is you are saving the space and it can be maximum 256. That I have covered. This last day I have covered. Last day I have covered. This is dictionary with the dictionary I have covered. Dictionary. This is one thing, great thing. What is basically iterator? It's a 
is a basically is interface uh, it is a uh, in the values uh, it can be uh, is it can be uh, can you tell me whether it can be infinite can you tell me any one of you anyone can it be infinite any any hunch will do yes no, or sir uh, no it can be you you know infinite are two types uh, what are the two types can anybody tell me yes two types of infinity i think you know all this infinity are two types big infinity small infinity what are the this what is small infinity what is small infinity is a countable infinity like you you count 1 2 3 4 5 6 any infinity you can give a token number to it say i can give you 1 2 next iterable 1 next 1 3 iterable i just give iter iterable 3 4 5 6 this is smaller infinity but if you say take the space 0 and 1 you say 0 and 1 it is a 0 0.1 then say 0 0.1001 then you say 0 0.1 5 5 0 is 1 so this is uncountable you cannot give a count if you give any count you can create more 100 items within this and within this another 100 items. that is in uncountable so that is a bigger infinity. So between infinity between any two numbers, say zero or one or one and two, there's a bigger space. But it is, looks uh, might uh, strange to you, but in the mathematical sense, bigger infinity lies between zero and one. But whenever you say countable infinity, it's like zero, one, two, that is called countable infinity. That is a smaller infinity. That infinity you can you can uh, you can almost measure. You can almost iterable so this can be infinity of smaller infinity that is countably infinite not uncountably infinite uncountable infinite is any real number values between 0 and 1 that is uncountable or any values of real values are uncountable but integer values are countable infinite so this iteration is a kind of a interface and giving a python i will just ask next like it is a if you as a token it will automatically drop down whenever you go to any uh, any bank any modern bank for you want to have any query you just type it uh, you get a this token uh, a piece of uh, paper slip so that will that will automatically uh, give you a number to wh uh, which order then you can see the uh, display that whether your number is coming that is a basically an iterator function so that is very helpful in real life you see everywhere is a a token anywhere you go any any queue any queue you are giving you are giving a token because you cannot be in the front of the uh, queue you cannot be there maybe maybe some distance restriction or covid restriction so iterator give you a token that's the great thing of uh, python that is a basically interface i'll see you in for i range say in i in this is another beautiful thing you know you will not get it in C because it will give, give much readability of our programs like you know, that is automatically iterate let's see so basically iteration is basically a iterable and iterator so this is a you have to have a this iterable function how can you say a double underscore that 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 has been in python that is is a basically a very inbuilt function like init function is the constructor in python in java the same name and here it is a double underscore whenever you see double underscore that is very private function here is a double underscore lane double underscore content it is basically all private so it is a, is this is a sequence it is basically a sequence and iterable is a this this function has to be built in you can make a any class may be iterable so you have to make it a iterable class and you have to make this function Next, I will come to this. A concrete slab plus must implement iter. Iter is a is a basically a constructor of iterable function. So that's it. Um, iterable, which is iterator. These are the typical question asks in your interviews. And next method have to be input. Let's see what is this is a class iterable. What do I say? Uh, this is the your constructor and uh, iterator class iterator. This iter cell return cell. And next, and 
if it crosses the limit, so every set is not infinite, right? Uncountably infinite. And that is a the supported. But if it is, if you have a list with uh, ten, then if it is there, you have to have stop iteration exception would be generated. And stop exception you can handle it with typical Java. We have a try catch and block here in Python. The try except block. The except block you have to catch this stop iteration. You have to say that um, it is already ended. So please do the needful things. So that is the great thing. Uh, but the advantage of iterable and iterated is it gives a very easy interface. You just say next, next, next. Data will come. If one next uh, at the end of the list, it will not go back. It will not go back. It will give a stop iteration uh, exception. And you, if you put all these things in try except block, because you know C doesn't have exception handling. You know what is exception because uh, I have covered exception handling because that is the one of the negative point of the C, uh, and that is the reason the Python Java has to be there because these are all the highly used language. Exception means if any times error comes in, error, certain errors, hard errors you cannot control, like memory error, power error, but some errors like this kind of divide by zero error or this kind of error you can handle but in the program itself that that exception you have to every exception has name and you have to where the exception can occurs you can uh, you can you can have you know this then your programmer put it in a try except block and you can catch and do the remedial things that is the readability of the program much helpful okay and in in in, in C, the exception handling done, it is by exit 0, exit 0 or return 0 is good, but return 1 means one kind of false, return 2 is one kind of false and within 1 and 2 you have to switch case. So, the program's readability hampers. So, in Python and in Java also, the exception all built in, they already they give a name. So, program readability much better. And C, exception handling done by your return code. So, whenever you, everything is okay, you say return 0 uh, and return 0 when everything okay. If there is a file error, you say return 1, return 2, return 3. That is the convention of that programmers. But and you have to handle all these errors by switch clause. If it is 1, this error, if it is 2, this clause. So, programs become lengthier and it readability affects uh, different program to different program, it is differs. But in Python, Java, all exceptions. Are all exceptions are given name. Any question? Please, any question? Exception handling. I will cover. I will be covered, but this is the exception handling. Is the screen visible, please? One of you? Yes, sir. Yes. yes. Sir, visible. Yes, sir. It, is, it is sensible what I am saying. The exception handling, one of the great thing the, that is uh, Python is the best. Java is also very good. C is also good. So, this is the things the exception handling. What is exception? Because in programs, exception will always come. Because whenever you're running program at your desktop, it's okay. But whenever you're running at the runtime, whether you have the real life data, the real life data might be very different. You are expecting floating point, there are coming strings. You are expecting strings coming floating point. So, and different types of floating point. So, exception can come real time very often, and your program should not crash. Your program should handle it. How to handle it? That is exception handling. So that's it. Okay. Yeah. This is a. Uh, I already told. This is the next next method, and this is a stop iteration is the exception, and this is the iter. See, this is my my program. Uh, this class my members. I run this, and let's see what what happens. This is. I'll go back to the screens now. Yeah, class my members. So, which we, we can change a little bit what we can change. Okay, let us run this. Yeah, it is coming. Yeah, it is coming there. So you want to. So, how can you say we say class my members printf? So, it is automatically what is the advantage I have. I have given a uh, uh, this class my member. This uh, you have to. This is constructor. You have to make it. Okay. It is say self dot a one.
return self uh, x l and this is incremental return x my numbers I am just my it, it will ask. But if I go for some something more it, it will automatically come. Okay. So I think anything more I another thing I go here. Let us see this program. Yeah, stop by raise stop isolation. Yeah, because it is yeah, it is it is at the end of this thing. So if you go for more, it will be automatically it will stop and it will print it stop by iteration. Okay. I I think you run until and unless yeah, I'll share the code with you. You run until and unless run this code. Uh, only thing is is you have a constructor. Is a method you have to build it. Let's see another. This one not much interesting. Okay. Okay. Uh, so I revisit once more. So what we uh, just covered today: the uh, difference between list and dictionary. Dictionary is immensely powerful, and um, and it is not there in Java. Um, and it's not there in C++. It is very much useful because the whole concept of uh, algorithmic complexity changes because you put anything into into it, and automatically uh, the uh, you have to say that I'll call by say you have to call uh, say SRC. I I say SRC all data put it here, but I should not change the SRC name here. So that is SRC is a key value. And all my data, say first name, other name, uh, phone numbers, and all this, it is a values. So whenever I call SRC, uh, uh, then all the data values comes. So that is a great advantage, and you don't have to uh, put the data in sorted way, so that you have even in sorted way. What is the best advantage you can get in in sorted way? Login, uh, because you know uh, even in sorted, uh, if you want to know the middle po any point, then you have to go from by middle. If it is a binary, if it is a binary sort, binary sort, if it is uh, greater, you have to go this way. Or it is lesser. This is so maximum advantage you get is the login. N is the number of items. But in the dictionary, you can find it one. That's a big, big advantage. So, but if dictionary, if it is a thousand elements, uh, so what is the size of the dictionary? If you want to put fifty elements, what is the size of a dictionary? With the fifty, anybody can answer. Can anybody tell me how how many dictionary size should? It should be it at least double to get. Otherwise, it will be collision. If you know the hash table, uh, little bit about read about hash table. Hash table says uh, they generally hash the function. Say if I put my first name Shomnath or your first name, they uh, go for Shomnath and hashing, and uh, they the table actual table they save it. Actually, the it should be nearest double. So if you want to store, say we have a uh, nineteen faculties. Our CSE deployment, so our hash table should be minimum 38. Then there will be no collision. If we have 19 values and 19 values, then there might be a collision. Say SRC, ERC, because our titles are same, RC may may go to the same value. Okay, so hash table should be at least double the actual value. So that is the space complexity. Uh, list you have only 19 values. Okay, that is the advantage of list. Space complexity less. But nowadays you have a 4 GB, 8 GB RAM, so you can afford uh, more space, but you do not afford the searching time. So if you go for list, so SRC, ERC, then you have to go by uh, ON, okay. And if you go for dictionary, we can click it O1. But we have to give more space to dictionary. That is the great thing of the dictionary. We have covered dictionary. That we have covered the last class. The Python is. Every even integer, real point, these are immutable. Not even Java. Java is uh, all primitive data types are mutable. So Java that way, though Java called the object oriented programming language true, but Python is more object oriented. Python everything is an object. Even a integer is an object, and is is ID value. But ID value is useless. It is just give you satisfaction with the internal. But that is not a pointer. Okay. So and what is call by value? Call by value anything you pass it by a immutable things that is a call by value. If it's immutable, it can be changeable. So 
mutable means it can be uh, what can be the mutable it can be bitary bitary is a mutable uh, list is mutable so if you want that's a call by reference if you put anything in the mutable there that's called by reference yes i, I now uh, class is yours